Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com and today's topic is risk in mutual fund schemes right so really really important topic um, common question that uh, which of the following schemes uh, is most riskiest right right so uh, very common question hai in ASM me SEBI ke exams me so that's what we are going to discuss today the level of risk in various uh, kinds of mutual fund schemes so please before doing this session before uh, watching this session please watch the previous session in which i taught you about the various uh, types of mutual fund schemes so latest as per the latest mutual fund categorization notification i did a proper video to wo pehle dekh le uh, the latest mutual fund categorization ka scheme okay chalo before starting let me tell you that we have started nism uh, 5a mutual fund distributor course in which we are providing video classes notes test series and this is a seven days plan within seven days you can complete your preparation everything is available on learn.bankexams today and bank exams today's mobile app all the links are available in the description so let's just start so uh what is the basis of assessing the uh risk the basis of assessing risk in various mutual fund schemes to basis kya hai risk assess karne ka first of all equity is riskier than debt the risk is higher in equity than debt. Equity is more risky, is riskier than debt. Debt is not risky, nahi hai. equity is risky. That is a point number one. In debt scheme, in debt scheme, as the duration increases, the risk of losing the capital also increases. So if you uh, give a loan to me, or let's say if you give me a loan of rupees uh, 10,000 rupee, and I tell you that I'll give you back this money after one month. And in the second case, I tell you that I'll give you, uh, I'll give back this money after three years. Obviously, there is a high probability that I won't return the money after three years. But obviously, there is a higher probability that I'll return you this money within one month. Because my financial position, my financial condition won't change in one month. But who knows, after three years, I have this much money or not. So, uh, financial position change hoti hai. And maybe within three, after three years or five years or seven years, mere paise paise na ho. So, a financial position change hoti hai. As the duration increases, the risk of losing the capital also increases. And yes, diversification is a tool of reducing the risk. Whether in equity schemes or the debt schemes. See students, in case of an equity schemes, there is an equity scheme which invests its money only in 25 stocks. Classic example hai focused schemes ka. And there is an another scheme which invests in 80 stocks. 80 high quality, you know, large cap stocks. Obviously, uh, other things remain same. Agar 80 stocks, if the money is invested in 80 stocks, it is less risky. Because let's say if one company goes bankrupt out of 25 and one company goes bankrupt out of 80 stocks, right? I mean, it will have major impact if there are fewer stocks, right? So as the diverse, diversification is a tool, we are, you know, investing our money in more uh, stocks. We are investing our money into more financial products, right? That applies to debt as well. Uh, a, uh, a debt scheme, you know, invest in, let's say, 100 uh, debt instrument. Another one is uh, invest in 10, uh, you know, funds. Uh, 10 uh, corporate uh, deposit instruments right so if one or two companies goes bankrupt here it will have a major impact of 5 to 10 percent right and if one company goes bankrupt out of 100 instruments i mean it won't have a major impact right so diversification is a tool of reducing the risk in debt and equity schemes so more human involvement is involved whenever the more involvement uh, of human decision making is involved it leads to the higher risk. A uh, classic example is index fund are less risky. Index funds are less risky than let's say uh, any other equity fund. Uh, let's say the focused fund or the multi cap funds. Index funds are less risky than the multi cap fund. In the index fund, they are, I mean, the fund manager, he's doing nothing. They are just tracking uh, an index. That's it. They are not taking any decision. But a fund manager, he can make a wrong decision while selecting the stocks. In the index uh, fund, nobody is making a choice. But in multi-cap, there is a scope of human error. 
and then below highest rated see there is a rating of debt instruments obviously the highest rated debt instruments they are less risky less riskier than the instruments who are rated uh, less than who are given the rate rating of less than highest rating right so if there is that triple a uh, you know uh, a rated debt instrument and another one is b uh, i mean b plus or such kind of ratings are there obviously the higher the ranking is the better it is the safer it is right now in the debt funds in the debt funds credit risk funds we also call them the junk bonds the junk funds or the high yield funds we also call them high yield funds of so, uh, high yield bonds okay we we call them high yield funds so 65 percent of the money is invested in uh, financial instrument of below highest rated instruments 65 percent of the money is invested in below highest rate in bad quality debt instruments so there is higher probability of losing the capital and the return will obviously high right so credit risk funds are the you know most uh riskiest they are the like most risky uh debt funds in uh in the debt funds category right then the diversified debt funds in the diversified debt funds uh the money or the investors money is invested uh with a lot of you know multiple multiple uh you know debt instruments so it provides the benefits of diversification right so it's less risky than the credit risk fund then what are the guilt funds in the guilt funds 80 percent of the money is invested in government securities right so it is less risky 80 percent of the money is invested in the government securities and as the money is invested with the government securities it's not that risky right because the government is the last organization to go bankrupt right and then the liquid funds are there in the liquid funds the investors money is invested in you know low duration uh, financial instruments for one day or two day or three days right less than seven days so liquid funds are having the lowest risk and the lowest returns right liquid funds are uh, most secure uh, investment option in the debt fund category right let's move forward in the equity fund sector funds are riskiest if you are aware about the equity markets ye bahut common hai uh there is a sometimes uh, i mean right now there was like uh, last during last few uh, quarters uh there was nbfc crisis all the stocks of nbfcs were going down in the nbfc crisis were there in 2015 there was crisis of oil uh, marketing companies in i think 2009 there was a crisis of real estate companies in 2012 there was, there was a crisis of it companies so that's common that's common in the market there will be crisis with a certain certain segment and maybe you invested in a certain sector and at a peak you invested here but now there is a crisis and you invested here maybe you are going to lose a lot of uh, a major portion of your corpus so sector funds are riskiest investment because you are investing in a certain part of uh, a particular sector then there are focused funds in the focused fund, uh, the fund manager can invest in at max 30 companies. So you are not getting the benefit of diversification. In the multi cap or uh, multi cap kind of funds, uh, your money is invested in 80, 70, 80 uh, stocks and companies, right? But here, as the money is invested in less amount of companies, so this is riskier than multi cap or other. Uh, large cap kind of funds right in multi cap generally the money is invested in 50 60 stocks generally 50 60 70 such number so it is less risky than the focused fund the reason in the multi cap you are getting the advantage of diversification and the index funds are the safest why so first of all no human judgment is involved if a company see there there is a uh, in the nifty 50 there is a list of 50 best performing companies right 
if one company is not performing well, this 50th number is not performing well, and there is some company who's performing really well, that company will be added to the nifty 50. And the company who was not performing well, which was not performing well, that will be out of that index. And that will be the out of our, uh, will go out from your, uh, you know, mutual fund scheme as well. So no human judgment is involved. And this is the safest one. Okay. And the expense ratio is also really low. Sometimes the index fund provides a better returns than sector funds than the focus fund and some, sometimes better returns in the multi cap funds. But anyway, index funds are safest. <clears throat> then there are hybrid funds. Hybrid funds are like a combination of equity and the debt. Aggressive balance fund is the riskiest fund. Why? Because the investment in equity is more. Investment in equity should be 65 to 80%. And that investment in debt could be 20 to 35 to 20%. As the investment in equity is more than the debt fund, this is more risky. While in case of conservative, uh, you know, uh, conservative balanced equity fund, investment in equity can be 10 to 25%. While rest of the money needed to be invested in invested in 75 to 90 percent of the money should be invested in debt as the more money is invested in the debt the return will be low and the risk will be low now there is dynamic asset allocation and the multi asset asset allocation what happens in the dynamic asset allocation uh suppose the market is performing really well the equity market is performing very really well right now the valuations are really high the market is expensive what the fund manager is going to do? He is going to take money out of equity and he is going to invest in the debt instruments. Right? And whenever the market crash, he is going to take money out of the debt and he is going to invest in the equity. So that is dynamic asset allocation. As a lot of human judgment is involved, this investment is way more riskier than the multi asset allocation. Right? This is kind of riskier. What happens in the multi asset allocation? At least 10% of 10% uh, of that AUM should be invested in three asset classes. What are the various asset classes? Equity can be there, debt can be there, bullion can be there, right? So such uh, you know uh, options are available. So at least 10% in each asset class. At least 10% in debt. At least 10% whichever uh, class of you know investment uh, the fund manager is doing. 10% should be in one class. Okay. 10% in three classes. So that's all for today students. I hope you like this lecture. If there is any doubt in your mind, there is a discussion board where you can ask your questions. So thank you and have a very nice day.